Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so glad that you're here in spite of the weather. And a great time in Sunday school, small group this morning. Thank you, John, for leading our class. And Edwin, thank you for are you back there? Oh, okay. You're high, high, high. Thank you, Edwin, for leading uh, your class. We appreciate it. Uh, let's have prayer together and we'll continue to worship. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Father. And well, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of meeting together. Lord, I just know that, that, that we are from different areas of our parish, different areas of our community. We come with different burdens on our heart, different issues, things rattling around in our minds, things rattling around in our hearts. And Lord, I pray that we, that you steal those things. Help us to focus. We're not here to be seen. We're here to fellowship with you. We're here to hear from you. We're here to be encouraged by you. And Lord, we know that you do use your people to encourage. And we, we thank you that we can come together and be that encouragement. Father, we just pray that you speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Help us to bring everything into focus, which is you. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Just scattered in so many directions. Our thoughts are everywhere. Lord, bring us into focus. Still us. Calm us. Energize us. Father, we love you. We praise you. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name. Lord, speak to our hearts as we continue to worship. In Jesus' name we pray together.
Thank you, Praise Steve. Leading us in our worship this morning. <clears throat> If you would take the Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Or if you have your tablets, click them things, however you do them, phones, whatever. I prefer pages. In just a few moments, we're going to work our way through the Lord's Prayer. This was initially going to be the last of our series on prayer, but we have one more, so next Sunday will be the last. Today is more of a teaching outline rather than a preaching type outline, and Joanna has so graciously provided space on the little half sheet if you would like to take notes, and I encourage you to do so, because what we're talking about is very important in all of our lives as believers. Well, as I prepared each week, this is week four, but as I, as I have prepared each week, you know, God has truly challenged me. He's truly encouraged me. And I, I believe as I've shared the messages with you each week, I, I, I do believe that God is doing the same thing in your lives in regard to prayer. And we can say we pray every day, but do we really? God is so good to us. Yeah. Okay. You're breathing this morning. His desire for us is to be successful in our spiritual lives. To be, to be successful on our spiritual journeys, individually and as corporately as the body of Christ. To, the, to be successful and to be useful for His kingdom purposes. God is so good to us. God, completely God. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, three in one, helps us to mature as disciples of Christ by connecting. That's my Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> John and Martin have a Kyle. He's been here with me. But God, three in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, helps us mature as believers supernaturally. There's that word, John, in, in take or leave. Supernaturally connects with us and empowers us through prayer. Now, as we journey together through this series, if you missed some of them, they're online. So connect, stay connected to us that way. Um, but as we journey together through this series, God has reminded us of the principles of prayer. That was part one. Pray in faith with our hearts, our minds willing and determined to accept His will for our lives, regardless of the outcome. Pray with a proper attitude of humility. Pray in the name of Jesus, the name which is above every name. Amen. God has reminded us that there is power in, there is power of prayer, but the power doesn't lie with you. It doesn't lie with me. God is the power of prayer. The all-knowing, everywhere present, all-powerful God, our God, is the power source of prayer. God's power through prayer provides us the forgiveness of sins. Provides us the boldness that we need to approach His throne of grace, His throne of mercy. The boldness to approach others as we share the gospel and fulfill the great commission for our churches and for His kingdom. God also provides through the power of prayer peace and tranquility. Regardless God has reminded us that the persistence of prayer is so important. Persistence of prayer. Through persistence in our praying, God teaches us 
the practice of prayer. He teaches us how to pray. He teaches us faith. A faith that grows deeper and richer as we stay connected to the Bible in prayer. Now God continues with us this morning on our journey through prayer with part four, the practice of prayer. This morning as we think through and as we reflect on the practice of prayer, what, what we want to focus on is this. We want to focus on the actual application, the actual model, the method of our time with God in prayer. Um, now, our working definition in prayer, if you've been keeping up with our definition, we've kind of built it up as we've gone through each part of the series. But our definition of prayer is, in spite of difficulty or opposition, prayer is an active, firm, determined, prolonged conversation with God through a high wire of faith in an attitude of humility based solely, squarely on Jesus. Misplaced focus in ministry leads to burnout. Okay. 
Are you a witness? Yeah. It leads to burnout. It leads to stall out, which then causes the church to stampede to God for a bailout. I like that. I'm going to come on and read that. A little okay. wordplay there. Okay. These are simple things that we find ourselves so bogged down, inefficient, and ineffective because we overcomplicate. Our focus becomes more about the details and less about the reason. This causes us to, to burn out, stall out, and then look to God for a bailout. Go, God. Oh, God. Lead us, guide us. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment. Fix this problem. Fix this mess that we have made. All the while, God in heaven, <laughs> through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, is shouting in our ears, kiss, kiss, kiss. Keep it simple and straightforward. <laughs> you thought I was going to say keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> the original acronym KISS comes from a design principle noted and given to the U.S. Navy in 1960. Very interesting is to research those kinds of phrases. Keep it simple and straightforward. I now Thanks to COVID, God, carry a sense of simplicity now in my heart and in my mind. I, I, I'm at rest. And it's taken this to get me there. Because I can tell you, Kim, Kyle, Seth, and up there, I can't get wrapped around the axle quick. I overcomplicate. I make the simple tedious. My hair is falling out. <laughs> but now I carry a sense of simplicity. In ministry as a pastor, shepherd, leader, one who was created for kingdom purposes, all believers, you've been recreated for kingdom purposes, you are created for kingdom purposes. But I refuse any longer to overcomplicate and overthink. Did you hear my word? I said refuse. You know when you're in ministry and you start hearing those voices? It's not like, skip it, you know, not like that, but you start hearing the voices of people and, and denominations and this and yeah, that. Not, not like us, Mike. <laughs> but you start, yeah. I refuse to overcomplicate. I refuse to overthink. I refuse to any longer become bogged down, inefficient, and ineffective in ministry. This includes, and this spills over into my practice of prayer. The actual application, the actual method of my praying. So the one point that we have today the practice of prayer is kiss. Keep it simple and straightforward. Now our working definition becomes, as we think about keeping it simple and straightforward, a working definition in prayer, keeping it simple and straightforward in spite of difficulty or opposition. Prayer is an active, firm, determined, prolonged conversation with God through a high wire of faith in an attitude of humility based solely squarely on Jesus. And there's no better example of the simplicity and straightforwardness in our practice of prayer than the Lord's Prayer. So within the context of the Lord's Prayer, we're looking at Matthew chapter 6. Look at verses 5 through 8. Now I'm reading from the King James Version this morning because that's just the way that I learned the Lord's Prayer, and many of us have used the King James for many, many years, and that's okay. It's a translation just like any translation is a translation. But this is what I'm using this morning. So Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Verily, truly, I 
say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 6. <coughs> but you, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret will reward you openly. Verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking, their babbling. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you even ask. Then we have the Lord's Prayer. And I have it on the PowerPoint set. Let's say it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. There's another one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ed. That is simplicity. That is straightforwardness of our practice of prayer. Now let's break it down. Jesus said, verse 9, look at it. Jesus said, then this is how you should pray. Now, this is an actual application. I've said it already. It's an application. It's a model. It's a method of our time with God in prayer. This isn't, I've said it again before, this isn't a secret chant. This isn't a stream of incantations of conjuring, like rubbing a, a magic ball. There's no such thing. This is not what this is. This is kiss. Kiss in action. Keeping it simple and straightforward in a practice of prayer. And our Lord Jesus Christ Himself has given it to us here in His model prayer. As we look to the Lord's Prayer as an application, as a model, as a method of prayer, I want us to work our way through it. Thinking of the practice of prayer as steps. Now, I've broken it down to seven. So this is where you start taking your notes. Step number one. There goes my voice. So the first thing that we should do when we practice prayer, step one, acknowledge God's relationship with us. Acknowledge God's relationship to us. Back in your text, back in our text, to whom are we to direct our prayers? Our Father. Think about this. Our Father. Turn your Bible. Hold your place here. Your finger there. Turn to Galatians chapter 4. And let's look at some more. Let's add some more of this. This is part of my frequency, part of my bringing into the text here. This, it supports itself. The Word of God supports itself. So look at Galatians chapter 4. We're going to look at 4 through 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because The Spirit who calls out, who cries out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you also an heir. Do you understand the depths of that? In all seriousness, the Spirit in our hearts Now this translation of Abba, this is not a flippant translation. This is not a loose translation. It depicts a childlike intimacy, a childlike relationship. 
with our Father. The downside of that is there are a lot of people who can't relate to that because of the example that their earthly fathers have set for them. We need to pray for them. They need to be on the prayer list, our prayer guide. So when you when pastors teach about this, Abba, Father, Daddy, some people go, I'm leaving. I don't want nothing to do with that daddy. God is our Father. But we can only claim, we can only call Him Father through Jesus Christ and the indwelling presence and power of Holy Spirit. That's the only way, that's the only avenue, that's the only access that we have to God to be able to call Him Daddy, Abba, Father. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, just one chapter over from the Lord's Prayer example. Matthew chapter 7, 9 through 11, Jesus said, you parents, this is the New Living Translation, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you, sinful people, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? God loves God cares for us like we love and care for our children, for our family members, but much more, much better, more better. If we can't even wrap our minds around that, that depth of love, it's such a joy, it's such a privilege to be able to call God Father. It's a joy, it's a privilege to be able to be called sons and daughters of God, isn't it? Yes. yes. Listen to what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 1. The whole chapter is, is very applicable, but I want to read a few verses, 3 through 5. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul penned or dictated to any, his secretary these words. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. In his eyes, God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You and I, by calling God Father, Dad, brings him great pleasure. Back to our Lord's Prayer text, verse 9. As we continue practicing prayer, the second thing that we should do is, step two, acknowledge God's worthiness. You write that down. Acknowledge God's worthiness. As we pray, we say to God our Father, Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Holy, that's very simple. Holy is your name, your character, your authority. You are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. When we pray, we are in an actual conversation with the great I am. Think through this with me. When we are praying, we are in an actual conversation with the great I am, the beginning and the end, the ancient of days, the all 
one, our Father. Let's catch a glimpse of God our Father's worthiness. Let's, let's catch a glimpse of God our Father's holiness. I'm turning to Isaiah. Chapter 6. You don't have to turn this if you don't want to, but I am. See that. We're catching a glimpse of our Father's worthiness, our Heavenly Father's greatness. Isaiah 6, I'm going to read the first four verses. I love this part of the text. I love it all. This one just, woo, in the year that King Uzziah died, With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. God our Father's worthiness. God our Father's greatness. He is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Continuing our practice of prayer, step three. Acknowledge God's, and we don't like this sometimes, but acknowledge God's authority. Acknowledge God's authority. Verse 10 in our Lord's Prayer text, Matthew 6, 10. Your kingdom, your rule, your realm come. Your will, your work in my life, your work in your church's life be done. Cause it to be in earth as it is in heaven for all eternity. God's ultimate will for us to prepare us for there is to first receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Be saved. Then begin a new life of transformation, of sanctification, by the Holy Spirit, as we become more and more like Christ in our character, in our actions, God's ultimate will for us here to prepare us for there, then as God our Father's authority over us continues to strengthen over us, we are to become all things to all people. Why? So that we may, can win some. His authority over our lives compels us to love God, love Now this is to have our hearts 
to have our minds set, determined, fixed to live each day totally dependent on God for our physical needs to be met. Well, I have a job. I don't need God. Who gave you that job? Who keeps you in that job? Who gives you the ability to do that job? The little job fairies out there flying around? No, God. Give us this day, today our daily bread. Meet our physical needs for today. May they be met. Now within the context of the Lord's Prayer, we read this, Matthew 6, 31 through 34. Do not be anxious. Now see, we've read this before, and we're going to read it again. Because we have to, we have to hear this kind of stuff over and over again. Because if you're not me, your head is pretty hard. Mark, John, okay, John, Ted is hard, okay. <laughs> Do not be anxious, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows. He knows that you need all of them. But seek first what? The kingdom of God and these things will be added to. Therefore, he says it again. He knows how hard our heads are. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. As we practice prayer, we are to acknowledge God's relationship to us. We, to, we are to acknowledge uh, God's God's. Uh, worthiness. We are to acknowledge His authority, His provision, and we are now step number five. Here we are step number five. Acknowledge God's forgiveness. Verse 12 in our Lord's Prayer text. Acknowledge God's forgiveness. Forgive us our debts. That which is lacking in you, that which is lacking in me morally, forgive us our debts. Forgive our debtors, those who have sinned against us. Now it's God's forgiveness toward us that empowers our ability to forgive others. Now if holy, perfect, all-sufficient God will forgive our confessed sins and bury them in the depths of the sea, never more drudging them up again, why would you and I not forgive those who sin? Having a heart of unforgiveness hampers your relationship with your father. Having a heart of un you need to hear this this morning. Having a heart of unforgiveness hampers our relationship with God. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. If you have a heart of unforgiveness, you are in bondage. You are cemented. You must forgive, release that. Allow God to do that through you. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Rounding out our practice of prayer, step number six, we are to acknowledge God's protection. Everyone loves this part. They don't like the authority part, but they like the protection part, the thought of. Step six, we are to acknowledge God's protection. Verse 13. You still looking at the Lord's Prayer with me? Verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, as you do a word study on this, this is a beautiful picture of one being snatched, one being rescued from the current of an unrelenting, wild, and turbulent river. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Snatch us, rescue us from this current, from this unrelenting, wild, turbulent river. Isn't that a beautiful picture of God's protection? The last step as we close our practice of prayer, step number 
number seven, simply, straightforwardly, worship. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for how long? Forever. The doxology reads in my mind, praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Amen. We all agree together on these seven steps. Again, it's a model. It's a mess. Jim, you use one. Acts. No, I use praise. Praise. You can use praise. You can use acronym uh, Acts. And it means for different ways, different models. But we all do feel like we can agree on this seven because Jesus Christ himself has given it to us in his model prayer. We agree with Jesus' application, his model, his method. The motto of practice of prayer is kiss. Keep it simple and straightforward. As we practice prayer, it's good to acknowledge God's relationship with us. It's good to acknowledge His worthiness, His authority, His provision. As we practice prayer, it's good to acknowledge God's forgiveness, His protection, and simply and straightforwardly worship Him. Keep it simple and straightforward. In spite of our difficulties, Prayer is an active, firm, determined, prolonged conversation with God through a high wire of faith and an attitude of humility based solely squarely on Jesus. Now, as I confess to you in part one, I have a purpose, there's a purpose, there's an agenda, I like the word agenda too much, but there's a purpose behind the series, I, I, I know. And my purpose, of course, first and foremost, is to equip us for more effective ministry. That's always and foremost, to equip us for the work. And then second, to challenge us to begin an intentional prayer ministry in August. Well, we're, in the, we're about to be in the last week of July. Um, so far, I have five people signed up to be on this new praise team, pray, uh, prayer team, prayer ministry, and I'm one of the five. So, like that hymn suggests, there's still room for one. <laughs> there's still room for you. So if you'd like to join in this ministry of prayer, I'm going to have a brief meeting right after the worship service uh, and just give you a few things. We're going to have our meeting uh, coming up, first meeting. So if you feel God leading you there, you know who you are already. You haven't told me, and, and God's telling you that you need, to, you need to be a part of the ministry, then you need to be a part of the ministry. Um, but I'd love to have you. So during this, let's stand together. So during the song of reflection, the, the praise team is going to lead us in the song that they closed with last Sunday. I told you to be ready for it. Um, they're going to lead us uh, in a song, and then we're going to have closing prayer time together and then briefly meet uh, with, uh, with you guys and gals just right down here really quickly that want to be part or feel led to be part of this prayer ministry um, that we were beginning next, well, two weeks. So as the praise team leads us, um, you spend some time in prayer to seek with the Lord. You will come to the altar to pray if you do that. If you want me to pray with you, I will do that through my mask. Um, whatever you, you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to do, I will encourage you to be obedient. Don't quench the spirit now. Lead us, please.
quarantine. We need to pray for them to have a gazillion family members that they were in contact with. Just remember them in prayer. Seth had great reports of his praise from his uh, pediatric cardiologist, growing pains. Praise memory. And Gary had their baby, baby girls, let's pray. There's another praise to Wayne Simon. Thank you, Valerie. 